Declarations of conflict of interest. Any? No. Zero. Approval of agenda. There are one, two, three, four items. Any? Anything else there, Mr. Kelly? That's it, right? That's all, Chair Richard. Yeah. Uh, Move to uh, approve okay. the agenda. Moved yes. by Councillor Yankoff. Second by Councillor Duffy. Okay, all those in favor? Okay. Councillor Duran, you're all right with it? Is, is Councillor, is the deputy calling in for us? He's not. That's another reason we didn't have it tonight. He's not here. What? The deputy's not here, the finance. Selfish. Huh? Selfish. Oh, this is pretty thin. <laughs> okay. Uh, Mr. Kelly, we have 4A, second reading of the zoning development bylaw, rezone from low density residential to manufactured housing. Yes, sure. Second reading, correct? Yes, Your Worship. It says, whereas the bylaw to amend the city of Charlottetown zoning development bylaw P8 D.2043 as it pertains to the portion of the property at Norwood Road, Friar Drive, PID 416305. As attached, was read and approved a first time on February 8, 2021. Be resolved that the said bylaw be read a, a second time and be, and be approved. Moved by Councillor Duffy, a second by Councillor Yankoff. Councillor Yankoff, you okay with that? Councillor Yankoff? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have a point of order there, Councillor Twain? No question. No point of order. There's no questions allowed in the second reading, no discussion. No. We do this every time when we go to the second reading. Okay, so What's your point of order? Well, the point of order is, uh, I recall during the public meeting, there was uh, a lot of discussions as to what the residents would like to see in the development. Yeah. Uh, well, beyond the development. Just a question I have. Yeah, that's point not a point, point of order, order, sir. Okay, point of order is, have those, those recommendations uh, from the residents they want to make sure that uh, it's a complete subdivision with all the amenities to make sure that uh, uh, all of those things are in place and we're working towards those objectives. Okay. So your point of order will be duly noted in the minutes? No, 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 no. I, no one I can answer that, but have they been resolved? No. Mr. Yeah. Kelly, under the point of order, is it a... Is that a question there, or is that a no seeking debate. information? There is no debate during the second yeah. reading, Russia. Okay, shall no, maybe I just ask a question. Yeah, but it's it's in the minutes. It's in the minutes. So Correct. I there. some answers if those things have been resolved. We'll bring that back to the planning committee when we meet. Shall it carry? Carry. Okay, did we I resolve that the said bylaw be adopted? Uh, moved by Councillor Duffy, second by Councillor Yankoff. Sure. Okay, shall it carry? Pass. Pass. Any contrary? Okay. Uh, Councillor Duran, yay. Okay, 9 0. Your Worship, uh, to amend the City of Charlottetown procedure bylaw to revise. Sorry, everyone. Is the second reading of the procedural bylaw? It is. Okay. Okay. Not right now, Your Worship. Um, should be in your package. Have it there, sir. Yes, Your Worship. Thank to amend you. the C of Charlottetown Pro procedure bylaw to revise subsection 11.5 to be consistent with section 121.4 of the Municipal Government Act of PEI and include a fixed day each month for the special meeting of council. Resolve that the bylaw to amend the C of Charlottetown procedure bylaw be read the first time. <coughs> Your Worship. Uh, sorry. Um, that therefore be resolved that the City of Charlottetown procedure bylaw be read a second time. Yeah. And that the said bylaw now be approved and adopted. Move by Councillor Ramsey, second by Councillor Barger. Okay. Shall I carry? Carry. Councillor Duran, yay or nay? Yay. Okay, 9 0. And uh, Councillor or Cody is absent. Okay. You have three resolutions there, Mr. Kelly? Yes, Your Worship. For public works. <coughs> Moved by Councilman McLeod, second by Councilor Duffy, that as per the conditions of the public request for proposals for supply and installation of maintenance and of automated vehicle V-location AVL um, system, 
the best ranked submission Go Fleet Corporation in the amount of $364,568.22 plus all applicable taxes for 60 months of service be accepted worship. Uh, Councilor Tweed, do you have a question? Okay. Uh, Is this firm at a problem? Councillor McLeod, do you want to answer that, sir? Okay. It's, it's the same firm that we already have in existence, yes. So, will they have a problem? Yeah. Uh, I guess the thing that concerns me with respect to this particular resolution is that we're functioning and operating under difficult times. And we keep hearing about wanting to uh, and encourage to buy local, purchase local, but service, goods and services, uh, merchandise, whatever the case may be. And I'm given to understand is that as a result of the last public first committee meeting, that there might have been some, not potentially, but there might have been some misconceptions or, or um, maybe some mis misinformation. Is all the information that's being presented here with respect to this resolution, is all of this accurate? Because we've been getting emails from all of the uh, potential providers, and um, I understand that they're, they're not happy that people feel that their information is being provided. Uh, and again, I'm not saying this is intentional, but, but accurately. So I just wanted to bring that up. I mean, uh, look, folks, we, we can't say, you know, this is a mask I'm wearing. I got this from City Hall. Yeah. Right here. Local. local. Right? It says, I love, I, I love local people. Yeah, we can't be saying it and then not practicing it. Can we not, can we not look to where local, local business is here and try to help them? I, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't think it's... I'm not trying to be unreasonable here. Councilor McLeod, do you want to answer it or do you want to defer to? Uh, I'll go ahead. I'll start first. Go ahead. I'll let Scott finish. But um, I, I guess, Councilor Trail, if you spread your package there, you'll see the scoring and the ranking. Uh, you know, going local is important. Um, but unfortunately, in this particular case, you know, there's a playing field that you have to meet. And uh, according to staff, uh, you know, uh, the three people that sat on public works staff that graded these uh, these proposals, uh, you know, had a had a had a big urge to go with Gold Beach simply because of the way they answered in the in the past performance. So, but uh, 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 Scott, if you'd like to add to that, you're more than welcome. Scott, your worship, uh, 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 chair uh, or councillor McLeod uh, said it correctly. Um, it was a fair process. It's an RFP, and so. All proponents have to submit a proposal, and part of the proposal process is you have to make sure, as, as, a, as a proponent, make sure you're, you're answering all the questions that were put in, in these proposals and showing how you can meet it, and how you can meet or exceed those, uh, those conditions. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, the score reflects if they could meet it or not, or uh, based on what they provided in, in their proposal. So. Uh, we scored based on what was submitted to us, uh, and uh, it was again three individuals looked at it, and we all agreed uh, uh, on the scoring. Okay, just one second, Councilor Yankov had her hand up. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, could, could you speak loud enough so that? Uh, yeah. Thank you, Your Worship. I'm just I am on Public Works, and but I'm just curious when we send out the RFQ or the RFP, whatever it was considered this time. Is there additional um, scoring points, if you will, if you are local? Like, do local companies get a little extra point system? And if they don't, is that something we can propose going forward for, for to to promote shopping local? Is that already she answers? Oh, let's go and answer. Go ahead, Scott. Uh, so, your worship. So, as part of proposals now, no, there are no, there isn't proponent or a portion of local on it. Uh, the scoring system is very well explained in the in the proposal. Um, it states how many points are for the specifications, so meeting the criteria that we've set out. Um, and there's a number of bullets, and there's a certain amount of points per bullet that they have to meet uh, in the uh, in the proposal. Um, 
as for local, we have to look at it with the uh, finance department. I'm not sure if we can do that. Um, so we have to refer to the finance department to look into the tendering process if we can indeed give a scoring based on local. Um, Councillor uh, Twil, I just want to get the first questioners. <laughs> Councillor Bernard and then Councillor uh, Bernard. Yeah, Councillor Bernard. Thank you, Your Worship. And this is more kind of a statement as a question, but I mean, the, the Gold Fleet Corp, which is right with 90 points, and I'm, I'm assuming the, the company that Councillor Twil is alluding to is Canadian Tracking Solutions, which is, which is local. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> I tend to agree a little bit. If, if it's much closer, I would, I would certainly say yeah. yes to local if it was within a couple of points. Um, but you know, when I see it, it off by over half, it's, a, it's, it's hard just to pick local because it's local when there's that much of discrepancy. Yeah. So again, if, if, if the local company was at 85 and the other one was at 90, you can make that argument. Yeah. But I just think that there's too yeah. much of a discrepancy between the two to, uh, to totally support local. Thank you, Councillor Bernard. Councillor um, Bernard. Thank you, Mr. Um, so this is a public works resolution. I'm uh, This obviously was vetted through finance, I assume. Yeah. So who's chair of finance? Chair, chair of finance is your chair. deputy. He's not here. Who's the vice chair? Right here. Councilor Bird. So this was vetted through finance? Yep. And this is finance recommendation also? Yep. Okay. okay. Thank you. Count, do you want to go Councilor Duffy first? Uh, Please. Yeah, I'll be quick. Uh, this happens a lot. <sighs> in the human relation or the human resources area especially we have people that apply for jobs here and the, the and this is in the hr so this is not public works of course and, and it, it states that you have to have done nine different elements that pertain to the job you're applying for and it has happened more often than not that long-term employees of ours uh, look at it and say yeah i've done all those things or i've done seven of those things but they don't tell on their on their resume or their application of what they did. You know, you drive a five-ton truck. Well, when did you drive? Where did you drive? What was the duties involved? And that sort of thing. They say, well, they know me at City Hall. You know, they know I've done that, so I don't have to put it there. When the screening takes place for the job application, they they look at the list of the nine, and they look, and he's only he only mentions that he's done three of them because he thinks the other six. They know me and they've seen me driving the truck, so you know, I don't have to do that. And they get screened out. They don't even get a chance to get an interview. And then they start screaming, why did the person who went, won the competition, who has less years and less experience than me, why did they get the job? They got the job because they pointed out to us in the application of what they were looking for and how you qualified and where you did these sort of things that we want. Uh, if you don't put it down, we don't know, right. just because we know who you were, because we have many people outside the province or inside the province, we don't know everybody. So, they, And this is the same thing, but it's in a different area. <laughs> they, they should have put down, if it's an element A, did you, did you provide this service, who did you provide it for, when did you do it, and what did you do? That's right. It was a skimpy um, presentation, I believe, but I didn't see the presentation. No. But did you see the evaluation of it, uh, Councillor? Right. Did you see the evaluation? I saw the evaluation. Yeah. Councillor Twill, you had your hand up there. No. Your second question. Uh, first and foremost, I've, all, I, I've tried here over the last number of months. Made the suggestion to the chair of finance that uh, there should be a component in the evaluation process for your local business. Uh, there should be uh, some type of reading that would uh, that would be favorable in, in, in the criteria when it comes to reading because uh, you know, I, I definitely think we should do everything we can to support our, lo our local businesses. I mean, we, we hear about the campaign, uh, we hear people <coughs> talking about it, and, and uh, to no avail. Uh, I want to go back to what I said earlier. And what I have to say, I'm not trying to be critical. I'm not saying it's intentional. But what I'm saying is, what I'm learning, I don't have the specifics, but what I'm given to understand is that information that was discussed in public works uh, is not accurate as to um, how the, uh, the ratings and how the proposal 
was evaluated and assessed. So I guess my question is, what happens if we pass a resolution tonight only to find out later that the committee didn't have all that information and not all, all the information was accurate, and then what happens is we got a local business that once again is trying its best, hiring people, <coughs> paying taxes, wanting to succeed in our community, <coughs> doesn't get the opportunity to provide service to our community. Yeah. And what's they reside in, to raise the family in, paying the taxes, wanting to hire people, and, uh, and, and <clears throat> God knows where it goes from here. So, and again, Scott, I say this with respect to you. It's, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not saying this is intentional. I'm, I'm not saying it's deliberate. I'm just saying what happens if we find out after we pass this resolution here tonight that the information that the committee on recommendation from the rating committee, selections committee, didn't have all the information then. What is the recourse then? Yeah. Councilor McLeod, do you want to answer that? Thank you very much, Councilor Do you want to say, well, could you just okay, add well, to you go ahead. That's okay. just, okay. Councilor McLeod, do you want to defer to I'll, I'll let uh, Mr. Mr. Kelly, Kelly, I didn't realize you were going to say something. I, I just want to clarify the members of the staff committee and the committees who reviewed this can only view with the information they have. We cannot second guess what may or could have been in that document we have to base on the facts and so as per councillor Trill's question again the person did not fulfill the request and did not put enough information to give it an, an overview uh, of a, of a uh, of a more robust scoring because uh, the documents don't portray that information. Do you want to add to that, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Councilor Club, because you're the chair of the committee? Yes, thank you very much, Your Worship. Uh, so, so Councilor Trail, uh, I believe you got the same phone call I probably got, and uh, and uh, I dealt with that uh, ASAP that there was some confusion that maybe they all weren't on the same page. So I directly called uh, Scott and the other two on the, on the committee and. And there was just a miscommunication between uh, what Doug thought had happened and what actually did happen. Yeah. And so it was fairly, everything was done. Uh, I jumped on that right away to make sure that it was. And, uh, um, you know, unfortunately for the local bidder, uh, you know, uh, they're not in the ballpark. So I can't, uh, I can't tell you. I, I wasn't happy with Doug. Yeah. Well, I was. You know, okay. something else, but it wasn't Doug. Yeah, but anyway, okay. there's no, no mistake. Huge one. Mm -hmm. You want to call the question? Uh, no, I, I want to ask a question. A short comment. Yes, is that uh, to reiterate what uh, Councillor Rivard said? Like to give a bonus for being a local uh, business. Uh, let's just say the gap was quite significant. Okay, without uh, revealing uh, to anyone what the numbers were, it was quite. It would have to be yeah. quite a bonus. Yeah. Well, it's a public document. Plus, it's open, yeah. so the, yeah. the ratings are there. Okay, so plus. It would, it would contravene, as you keep saying, about the Atlantic procurement. It's not allowed in the, in the, in the series. Oh, new information? Yes. 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 Uh, Go ahead. Yeah. You know what? With all due respect, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. You know, talk about the Atlantic procurement. Yeah. But I can guarantee you one thing, sir. In other provinces, they're doing everything they can to help their respective businesses. Yeah. Right? Councilor Tweed, I fully agree with you. So, you so, you, you, know you can ask at both committees yeah, I don't, where I, I was coming from. You know, but what I'm trying to say is it's great to make reference to Atlantic procurement. But I also know there's an everlasting campaign in this province, in this city, is to go above and beyond to, 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 to uh, support our local yep. businesses. Because we're going to support the charities, yep. fundraising. Pay the property taxes. Property, yep. yeah, exactly. Yep. So anyway, so it, it, it's great to appeal to the Atlantic procurement, yep. but uh, we're, I we're, we're guided by it. And I agree with what Dr. Burns said, I think. Now, <coughs> Yeah, you know, give us a fight chance. It's got to, the rating is going to be somewhat close. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, this one here, it's, it's, it's not really close. Yeah. And, you know, uh, for us to make those kinds of decisions, it comes to Brazil, um, it has to be somewhat close. And I think Councilman Rivera's mentioned, you know, if we're two or three points out or whatever, um, but, but to be as much as this one, it's, it's pretty hard to justify to say. I know everybody in this room would love it. I would look. Even ten points. Yeah. No, I'd look. Scott, when did the you know, we're kind of a, my understanding is that people back the public works. And yeah. And I, I hear that it went to finance, uh, so it was looked at with, with a number of eyes and then both management committees. Uh, that's why I asked if that's this is a recommendation public works making. It's also now a recommendation finance making. 
And Councilor Tweed, this, this process started back in January 17th, wasn't it, Scott? December 2nd. December 2nd. It was a while. Yep. Like, we've been vetting it quite a bit. Yeah. No, I'm Sorry, Councilor Bernard, did you? No, no, that's fine. Did no, you no, want to finish no. up? No, I'm good. Just questions questions. Questions. questions call. Questions call. Okay. All those in favor, uh, do I have to go roll call? No. All those in favor, please put up your hand. Okay. Councilor uh, Duran, yay or nay? In favor. Okay. All those against? So it's eight to one in favor. Councilor Tweel uh, opposed and Deputy Mayor Cody absent. You got another resolution there? You want to stay there? Mr. Mr. Bishop, moved by Councilor Cloud, second by Councilor Duffy, that as for the conditions of the public press for quotations for 2 2020 Kubota ZD1211, one with 60 inch and one with 72 inch commercial fabricated <coughs> deck that the low submission of good equipment in the amount of $29,936 plus all applicable taxes be accepted. Question. question. All those in favor, please raise your hand. It's a question. About the question or about the... Yeah. What is it? My question is, why, why is there such a discrepancy? Good bids. Your Worship, the, the only thing I can, uh, that we believe it is, it's just the year in sale that uh, this vendor had going on at the time of the, the, the tender, is what we understand. Yep. Okay. All those in favor, please raise your hands. Councilor Drawn, yay or nay? In favor. 9 0, Casey. And, uh, Your Worship, moved by Councilor Cloud, second by Councilor. Duffy, that as per the conditions of the public request for quotations for pole mounted LED Christmas displays, that the submission of Wayne Tucker Sales Limited classic displays in the amount of $34,008.40 plus, plus all applicable taxes be accepted. Oh, Christmas is coming early. <laughs> Question with the light, sir? Yeah. Yes. Uh, I don't know this gentleman. Who, who is Wayne Tucker? I don't know. Uh, we'll let, uh, we'll let the, yeah, do you know right. Mr. Tucker? It is a it's a company. Uh, classic it's not classic displays is actually the company is what they go by day to day, um, and they've sold us Christmas lights for a number of years now. So um, I believe they're based out of Ontario. Uh, they're one of the few that typically bids on our jobs. There's not doesn't seem to be a lot of industrial Christmas light vendors out there, and that's why we did go out to public tender see who else was out there, and they were the only ones that bid on it. Is that all right there, Councilor Tweel, about Mr. Tucker? And again, no one can promise you provide that. Not that I'm aware of, no. I knew of a Ma Tucker. What? I knew of a Ma Tucker, but it doesn't live <laughs> here anymore. <laughs> Question call? Questions call. Questions call. Please raise your hand if you're all in favor. Councilor Durant, yay or nay? In favor. Okay. This is coming early to show up here. Another one there, sir? No, Your Worship. So we have the presentation. Yes, sir. Right on. So if you want to get a drink or something like that, it's going to be a 25 minute presentation, right? Just facing. I support the dog. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah, I'm good. I'll move my chair over there. Thanks, sir. Wednesday morning, actually. Ah, <laughs> certainly, uh, your your worship. Uh, so uh, tonight, as everyone saw my email today, we're going to uh, kind of give you a brief update on uh, our traffic master plan for the West Royalty area out behind the mall. Uh, Mark McDonald with it to my left here, uh, the CBCI Limited. Uh, <coughs> he's been uh, slaving away at this project for the past few months. Uh, so we're going to let him take the lead on where we're at right now and where we're going. Good. Thank you, Scott. So, Mark, just before we begin, can we just make, allow him to give the whole presentation and then ask questions? Is that all right, Mark? Or do you want to, yeah. or do you want to answer questions along the presentation? What's your preference? I'll try and get through it as quickly as possible. Take your time. And, and I mean, I think some slides will just breeze right yeah. through, and and then we can come back to them. I think does that is that okay with everyone? Will we get a copy of these slides? You, we absolutely okay. can provide that. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, and my colleague Emmanuel Nicolescu out of our Halifax office should be on the line. You there, Emmanuel? Yeah. Hi, everyone. <laughs> All right. So we, uh, yeah, so West Road Commercial Area Transportation Master Plan. Um, and Emmanuel and some of his buddies over there have been doing much more of the work than I have. But uh, so this was a fairly major study that we started to undertake uh, in 2020. And this, this just gives you a quick overview of the study area of the part, portion of the city that it covers. So you can see it's bordered by the, by, the perimeter highway to the north, uh, Lower Malpec Road, North River Road to the west, Mount Edward Road to the east, and uh, kind of a line just below Walmart, uh, Home Depot, and Chantal Mall <coughs> itself. And this is all, yeah, <laughs> this is all, it shows all the, uh, in, the intersections that were, that were covered in the study area. The, the and unsignalized intersections. Uh, Emmanuel, are you able to talk for a bit about the development of the model? Yes, indeed. Decent traffic micro simulation. So the way we set up these, these traffic models, if, if you can uh, see on the, on the slide there, is we take our given study area and we break it down into quite many smaller pieces. We typically try to represent uh, the individual parcels or, or a large uh, kind of cohesive properties that have internal circulation. Now these little areas where we'll kind of sum up or aggregate all the travel demand entering and exiting that area onto the road network. In our model we build uh, kind of a digital representation of the study area, area road network um, in quite a lot of detail. Each road with all the respective uh, lane geometry, intersections, uh, crosswalks, uh, turning lanes, uh, stop signs and, and stabilization if it needed. So we reproduce the, the actual room at very high fidelity. Um, then we estimate actual demand on the road. Uh, and this we are discussing vehicular demand as well as uh, well, auto trucks and, uh, and buses. We estimate it from uh, several different sources um, most recently, we've been able to acquire data from a product uh, called Streetlight Data, which aggregates mobile device uh, location data that's basically uh, sold by third-party groups and sold by data providers. Uh, these are anonymous records of individual devices, and their location points can be mapped onto a road network as individual trips. So that gave us an initial 
kind of record of all the trips through the study area by origin and destination. Uh, once we had that, we used a variety of, of traffic counts we've undertaken and that the city has undertaken in the study area um, at key intersections. And these are counts pr primarily from 2019, some from 2018, and for um, and these are we're talking about the weekday a.m. and p.m. peak hours, as well as then the Saturday peak uh, afternoon counts. Um, pretty much when everyone is uh, is shopping, and that uh, or at least those counts um, were undertaken in June of 2020, at a time when we've kind of just looking at the travel patterns in the area, we saw that at least where Saturday travel is concerned, patterns had returned or were very close to, to pre-2020 conditions. So not, not too much affected by, by COVID-19 based restrictions. Um, the process then entails in this model taking that, that initial seed demand from, uh, from Streetlight data and adjusting it um, in various ways and factoring it to reflect the counts, um, uh, the count record. Once we have a calibrated, what we call a calibrated model, which means that this traffic model was able to produce travel patterns or traffic patterns in the weekday AM, PM, and the Saturday peak hours very closely to, to, to reality. So uh, on most movements, about 75 to 85 percent of the movements we are very very close to, uh, to to reflecting reality as seen through the counts um, once those counts or those volumes were reflected in all the movements we compare travel tra travel time um, the models realize travel time on all the major links compared to travel time data we extracted from google maps um, and on most segments, really the majority of them, we are within one minute um, of, uh, of Google Maps reported travel time. So then, um, at that point, we are able to reproduce really two data sets, namely the actual traffic volume on the road and the, the speed at which uh, traffic is, uh, is operating. So we consider the, the model to be, to be valid and a good representation of existing conditions. The next step then is to develop future scenarios or future representation of the road network and the actual travel demand and to assign those those trips on the road and and see what happens. Uh, Mark? Yeah, so thanks Emmanuel. Um, so then once the model was set up and calibrated and validated, we were able to use it then to, to look at uh, future conditions. So uh, this is just a, a very high level overview of uh, what what the study area looks like today and uh, but going forward we used uh, two horizon years 2031 10 basically 10 and 20 years out 2031 2041 so for each of these horizon years we made, made some assumptions about what the future land uses within the study area might be and and what some of the road network uh, changes and new roads and, and links uh, that that may need to be put in place to, to support that development. Um, so you can see here, down in the lower right corner, we're showing Sherwood Greens and Sherwood Crossing. Uh, the yellow represents uh, residential, residential land uses. Um, and we also know that um, kind of that triangular area um, just south of the trail up off Mount Ritter Road, we know that that's gonna be residential. We don't really know for sure what any of the other vacant lands are going to be. Um, we made some assumptions that for the, for the purpose of the study area and it doesn't, I mean, nobody knows for sure yet what's going to happen. We, we assumed that the corner up close to the bypass Small Peck Roadway would be um, residential and we assumed that the areas next to Princess Auto would be more commercial land uses for, uh, for 2031. Uh, Scott going to 2041. We assume that the rest of the uh, undeveloped areas would be would see some development. Um, so we have an area here just off Mount Road, uh, the blue area just off just north of Sherwood Crossing. 
We also assumed that that would go residential eventually, uh, probably low to medium des density. Actually, no, sorry, medium to high density. Um, and then the area, um, I guess St. Dunstan University property up toward Mount Edward and the bypass intersection, that corner, uh, we assumed that that would be residential. And then we've got the area, um, I guess, northwest of the Peter Pan intersection, um, Ryan's Drive, and uh, so kind of where it says Street, C, uh, Street D, um, we assume that that would be a split of commercial and residential. So once we, once we made all these assumptions, we were able to um, estimate how much traffic would be generated by all of this, uh, by all of this development, and, and try and estimate it and then distribute it onto the network. Uh, so this is a, a table here of all those undeveloped lots that shows the estimated trips um, during each of the AM AM peak hour, uh, the evening peak hour, and then the peak hour on Saturday. Uh, the number of new trips that would be estimated to be de um, generated by each of these new the development on, on each of these parcels. And once we tallied that up, um, this is just a, some high level numbers here, but um, this is an indication of how many vehicles uh, are during a given peak hour are traveling within or through the, the study area. So we've got over 7,000 vehicles right now, roughly, during a, a typical, typical weekday morning peak, peak period. Uh, and by 2031, 2041, you can see it's going to jump to 8 and 9,000. Uh, PM peak, very similar, nine up to 10 or 11,000, we think. And on a Saturday, uh, 2041, we think there, you know, if, if all those development assumptions were to come true, uh, we'd be up around 12,000 vehicles. In, a, in an hour. Um, so we we um, we looked at we took all this development and tried to figure out well what would we need to do to the existing road network to uh, allow it to accommodate all this traffic, all this additional traffic. So we've added some some new roadways here. Um, St. Martha's Court up in the top right corner is already built. It was built in 2020. Um, and there's a new connector road between Spencer and Towers that is, I think, going to be pending to construction in early spring or summer um, along adjacent to the mall right next to the trail. Uh, we're showing the Spencer Drive extension extending over to Mount Edward Road and connecting at, with a signalized intersection at Ash Drive. Um, we're also showing some new roads. Um, Basically, an extension of the uh, basically a fourth a fourth leg at the Irwin Mount Malpec Road intersection and coming into the the undeveloped area and uh, potentially coming down behind Canadian Tire um, and a couple of other roads there as well. And we're also showing for 2031 that Capitol Drive uh, from basically from North River Road up toward Peter Pan uh, may have to go to go to a four lane cross section, some widening. And similarly in 2041, uh, some additional new roads that we use for the, for the traffic model to, uh, to, I guess, provide land access and to help distribute the traffic and, and provide good circulation and, uh, and acceptable operations through the, uh, through the study area during all these peak periods. Um, so there's some additional roadways here. Uh, we're showing Ryan's Drive uh, extending north of Capitol Drive and curving around to connect at St. Dunstan Street to, uh, to serve that area. And uh, the Spencer Drive extension, we think <coughs> may need to be four lanes at that point, uh, all the way from the Peter Pan intersection to Mount Earth Road. And uh, there's several other areas here where some, uh, some signal upgrades and some new signalized intersections would be at uh, Spencer, Mount Edward Ash, uh, Malpec and Irwin, that's it. And then the, I guess the orange, oh, oh, also Babineau. Um, so Spencer and Babineau, where you have a four-way stop right now behind the uh, little soup store, um, which already has, uh, <laughs> has some congestion during certain times for sure. We're seeing that as a, uh, we'll need some capacity changes there, either a signal or, or something there as well in the near future. 
So there's a whole bunch of really boring slides here, and they're all they're all in the presentation. I'm not going to spend much time on them, but basically for each scenario, um, so each of the three years, basically the baseline year, 2020, 2021, 2031, 2041, and then AM, PM, and Saturday peak hours, we generated two types of output. So this this is the uh, the, the basically the existing AM peak hour. It uh, is an illustration of uh, the traffic volumes on each of the roadways that were in the model, as well as average speeds, vehicular speeds. Uh, everything's color-coded. Um, so it shows very heavy traffic, for example, coming in, coming in Capitol Drive and heading down North River Road in the morning, which we all know is, is very prevalent. High volumes on the, on the bypass, um, and of course, Malpec Road and, and University Avenue. Lesser volumes in through you know Irwin Drive and, and you know down through Walmart and Buchanan through the mall and stuff like that. Um, but if you go to a, uh, during the PM and Saturday peaks, you will you will see a, a change there. And then this is the other type of output we generated, which is simply uh, an illustration of the level of service. Which um, so it's basically the, the average vehicular delay at an intersection. If you pull up to an intersection. It'll tell you, um, you know, am I going to have to wait, you know, an average of 10 seconds, 30 seconds, a minute, etc. Uh, and it's an illustration for of, of each movement at each of the study intersections within the study area. Uh, so green is good, and orange and red are is is more delay. And as there's simply we, we went through every scenario here. I'm not going to I'm not going to linger on them, but I don't know. If <laughs> If anybody has any questions about a, spe a specific scenario or time period, we can, they're here if we want to discuss them. Councilor Yankoff, do you want to start out there? Sure. Thank you, by the way, for your presentation. Um, the residents from Ash Drive were concerned that that street was going to become a throughway. Right. And uh, the reason they did the bypass was to avoid that in the neighborhood area. Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering if you could speak to that to alleviate some stress from those residents? 100%. Uh, so, Ash Drive, yes. So right now, Spencer Drive is proposed to extend across the uh, across the trail and across the undeveloped area and, and connect to Mount Edward Road at Ash. Um, so will that add traffic to Ash Drive? <coughs> um, I, I don't think, I don't think so. I don't think substantially. Um, so right now you've got Towers Road, which is, is kind of isolated. It's the only east-west route through, you know, between the trail and Mount Edward Road, you know, from the bypass all the way down to Belvedere. Um, so it generates a lot of traffic, but I don't believe you'd have a, you have a lot of traffic on Montgomery opposite it. Um, and I know it's, it's much more convoluted to get, you know, to cut over to Maple than Ash is. Ash is a more direct route. But Ash also doesn't extend, like it doesn't, it, it doesn't, ex it's not a direct connection to, to be to uh, Bradley Point Road either. Um, I think, or, so Emmanuel and I have been discussing this quite a bit and trying to figure out, you know, what what will the impact on Ash be once once you extend Spencer? And we think that, um, that for the most part, people probably won't change their normal travel, their current travel patterns. Um, if you if you live along Lilac and you currently come out Fern Garden on Mountain Road, you probably will still do that. If you live on Kenley and come out Kenley on the Mountain Road, you'll probably still do that. It may attract a few local trips, like trips from within the neighborhood. Maybe they will divert to Ash once that connection is made. <coughs> but I don't think it's going to attract a, a significant volume. A significant additional volume of traffic. Thank you. Councilor Burr. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, sir. Uh, again, thanks for the uh, presentation. So the suggestion I made last uh, last time you were here was the potential option of making the extension, if it were to go through from Spencer to Ash, a one-way, making towers a one-way, right. putting in active transportation trails on both of the <coughs> roads, right. which uh, if you had Ash down Spencer, Spencer up to from top towers up to Mount Edward, <coughs> it would certainly uh, take away some of the stress of the traffic that's heading up towards Ash. Again, also give you the option for active, active, active transportation trails. Curious if you guys discuss that. We have. Um, yeah, so we, de we definitely did look at that, Councillor. Um, 
And I think, I mean, active transportation, I guess, would come down to road design, but I, I would I would think that we could, that active transportation could be incorporated into that corridor anyway, even if it is two-way. Um, but we think it should be, we think Spencer should be two-way. Um, because once that's once that's done, it creates a nice. So it's gonna it's gonna line up with well, it, it's basically an extension of Capitol Drive, the Capitol Drive corridor all the way through to Mount Edward Road, um, and that is going to. I guess it's, it's envisioned to become kind of the dominant uh, backbone, uh, you know, east-west connector, east-west link through the whole study area. So I think it's going to be very important that 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 functions as a two-way street uh, for that reason. Um, if, uh, yeah, I mean, and, and <coughs> for circulation as well, um, to, to allow as many options as possible. And, uh, anything else you want to say about that manual? In regards to the one way, um, or the figuring these two roads to function each other one way. Yeah, spend, spend your You're right from the, um, because one way had to, in this case, they would funnel everything to one single movement. So if it's eastbound, uh, presumably Towers Road would be eastbound and Spencer would be westbound. The move, westbound movement on Spencer is not so much of a problem, although all the traffic that funnels through this area, really primarily the really high volumes in the weekday PM and the Saturday hour, really becoming northbound on Mount Edward and trying to turn left into Spencer. So you're funneling everyone into a left turn there. And then on the outbound movement coming out of the mall area, it's a series of right turns and then another left turn into Towers Road. So really, it be, we become then bottleneck um, funneling comparatively large volumes value into single uh, left turns which typically have low capacity anyway. So in this case, what we, we strive to do is to split, basically spread the load. So you have more connections or more roads that are two-way, then you're reducing the volume on any given movement, thereby reducing overall delay. Um, I, uh, I'll a second my, my colleague Mark on, uh, the concern of increased volume on ash Given the, the really area on the regional road network, it, most of the traffic that would be coming through the Ash um, Link and from Maple it would be local in nature. Yeah. Um, it'd be counterintuitive or a bit of a, a detour to sort of get off of the Mount Edward access onto a local road, then filter through the neighborhood, and then get it to, to Spencer Drive. Okay. Okay. Councillor Tweel first there, Councillor Bernard. Councillor Tweel, you had a question? Thank you for your presentation, Daniel. Uh, as you know, there's a number of uh, <coughs> concerns in the community. And uh, I'm not an engineer. I, I don't, certainly don't have financial qualifications. But uh, you, you, you two gentlemen have it. But, all due respect, when you say you don't really, I'm paraphrasing, envision, uh, speculate that there's going to be a lot more traffic in that stride, you can't really say that for sure, can you? Not for sure. No, okay. So, so you really can't say that. Um, and as you're driving up Nash, okay, you take a, take a quick left before you know it, you're on Bracken Point Road. Just do that within minutes. So, the question to you is, have you said all the um, concerns from the neighborhood? Um, did you entertain or explore any other option going north on Mount Ever Road to see if, in fact, there was a possibility to construct another road as opposed to lining up Capitol Drive, Spencer Drive, and then shooting across the Mount Everett Road. Was there another option that could have been entertained or explored? For example, if you come uh, in down by, what is it, the Auto Place, Precious Auto? Or Princess Auto. Yeah, did, 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 did you explore that opportunity? Yeah. 
so that there wouldn't be that much pressure on on the uh, the older part of Sherwood uh, and, and shooting through there. If you know if you had to punch a punch a road in through there, would that be less of an impact and effect on the old on the on the, on the, the old part of Sherwood? So there wouldn't be that stress. The traffic wouldn't be shooting across, going uh, going eastward into the old part of Sherwood. Was that was that explored? That particular link was. Can so you back to that map, Mark? Can so you go back to that map where you show <coughs> connecting to Irwin Drive? Oh yes, yes. Yeah. Sure. Can you go back to that? That's a few slides. interesting concept. There it is, right there. Is it? So all right. Councilor Twill, are you talking about extending? Okay, so you've got St. Dunstan. Uh, my laser pointer is working on the screen. Right across here. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Just what I'm looking for, man, because yeah. it's to line up a road that doesn't impact and doesn't shoot across manner of the road into the older part of Sherwood. That's what I'm striving for, as opposed to, you know, you said yourself, probably going to have to widen it to four lanes and even back in 2031, I think you said, correct me if I'm wrong, in the back. You're going to have to even uh, recalibrate the lights and add more features to the traffic lights. Mm -hmm. So, to suggest, and again, I'm, I'm not an engineer, I don't, I don't need professor you know, uh, but to suggest that it's not going to have an impact on, on that particular neighborhood, geez, I, I don't know. I, and, and then, I guess my question is where we're at now is, did you entertain the thought where you could punch a road to mount a road where it doesn't negatively impact the effect on the east part and the old part of Sherwood? It, in lieu of extending Spencer? Yes. Uh, we did not look at did that. Not. I mean, the, the Spencer Drive extension, I think, was kind of a foregone conclusion. Yeah. It, it Why? Was, it's a natural, Why? It's a natural yes. intersection. Um, so Spencer Drive, you know, you don't want these interconnecting roads, right? You want nice fluid motion. So for people to end up here at Spencer and then have to cut across, yeah. it deters people from actually where we're trying. We're trying to put traffic to these spots on Spencer Drive to get to the Manor Road, to get them into these developments much easier. If you start putting, uh, you know, and, and with all traffic coming down Capitol Drive and intersecting University Avenue, if you punch it across over Babino, it's really not doing the purpose of what we're intending to do to carry the traffic. Uh, no. It wouldn't, it would not carry the traffic at all. And so now the increased traffic, you're, you're probably causing more issues than you are improving because now you have another intersection. Right now, we're actually not creating another intersection. We are uh, taking a three-lane or a three-legged intersection to a four-legged intersection. Where if you cut another one across, now you add another intersection in Manor Road. Yeah. So now we have <coughs> another set of signals potentially, more congestion. So now Manor Road gets uh, gets potentially more congested because it has more intersections. Yeah. Councilor Bernard, just to, let, let, just Councilor Bernard, he's been waiting to. Councilor Bernard, did you have a question? Uh, yeah. Yeah. You done? No, I'm not. You have another question? Yeah. So, so uh, I was gonna, I was gonna offer another response as well. But Fire away, Mark. But uh, I guess uh, you mentioned, Councillor, how Ash, it, it does eventually connect to Bradford Point Road. Uh, the, the, I guess it gets to the end, and you got to do. If you go to Lilac, right. and turn left in Lilac, and then turn on Thistle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. It's right. not a straight through. It's not a straight through. No. no. Um, I guess my question to you would be, how. I guess who would use that connection between Brackley Point and Mount Edward instead of some of the other connections that are yeah. there today? Or so just doing the bypass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I guess our thought is it, it, it's so close to the bypass, those folks, anybody that'd be in the vicinity of Thistle is probably going to use the bypass. Yeah. And anybody in the south is probably going to use some of the other connections. Well, Pine, okay. Oak, etc. Thank you for your stops, Mark. But yep. the thing I want to establish number one, you didn't entertain any other option. Or any other, uh, any other scenario. Okay, so uh, and with all due respect, Scott, it's to, it's great to say, uh, you know, you wanted to line up the intersections and all this kind of stuff. My concern, okay, my concern is the less impact and effect on on these established neighborhoods that have been there for 35 and 40 years, right? It's great to say we're we're going to line it up here. And we're going to do all that. Well, we're not really sure there's going to be an impact and there's going to be traffic. Well, 
that traffic's got to go somewhere. So when you line up that intersection, and again, I'm not an engineer gentleman, but traffic's going somewhere. So why not line it up where it's not, you have to punch a road in going north. Why not line it up so it's not going into yeah. the old part of the street? Okay. What makes you think they won't go into that anyway? Yeah. Pardon me? What makes you think they because won't go into that anyway? Because, the road, yeah, because yeah. there's no intersection Yeah, there. guys, just let's, let's, let's let the engineers answer. Scott, again, I think what you're talking about is just the flow of traffic, right? Correct. Connecting yeah. the east. That's that's a northern east west connection, right? E exactly. The one that exists in the south is Allen Street, right? And again, we don't want to keep adding more intersections. Yeah. More intersections do you introduce, especially it would likely be signalized at some yeah. point like that. Um, now you're adding more uh, delays to the flow of traffic on the road. And so now that could potentially push more people into the neighborhood. When you keep creating these bottlenecks on major through fares, yeah. where do people go? They go through the cut throughs. You know that. Uh, you know Harley Street, all those. When you create these bottleneck areas, right. people try to find the path of each resistance. Yeah. So, what we're trying to do here is create connection points that make sense that people are actually going to use. That we're not overloading the uh, Manor Road, not having too many intersections to help improve that flow through this area. We want to get people in and out of this area. Um, as quickly as possible without impacting, with the least amount of impact in the yeah. neighbors. Yeah. Okay, Councilor Bernard. Thank you. Um, so, Mark, right now, Towers Road and then the road is a lighted intersection there. So, what will happen to that? This, this is just down, it's not far at all. And I noticed you called it a, a signalized intersection also. Um, That's right. At Spencer Drive, do you mean? Yeah. So yeah. So, so, um, I wonder why it wouldn't go around right there. And then I'm just wondering, does that light of the intersection still stay at Towers Road, Manor Road? We do still have it as a signal. Uh, we were, yeah, we were wondering if enough traffic would be diverted off Towers that you potentially could entertain getting rid of that signal. Um, uh, uh, Manuel, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the model is suggesting that there'll still be enough traffic on towers that will need a signal there. Did did we look at it without one? Yeah. In future yeah. scenarios? I, that, that. Yeah. The both intersections should should be signalized. Towers should remain signalized as Spencer is signalized as well. Yeah. Okay. So you're saying right now many of the both of them would stay signalized? Mm -hmm. From what yeah. your information? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 If they're going over the graphic part of the road, they're going to go out to Buck Ash and they're going to go right to Buck Oak. I think that's probably the opinion. Uh, but Man of the Road is, is, is the main character. And I guess two questions. One, I don't know if you guys come up with capacities for roads. I don't know what Man of the Road would be, one. And two, I, I wonder, uh, that is that why you suggested a, a light intersection here? Because the next one's so close and you can signalize them together? Well, yeah, they would. They they should be synchronized or coordinated. They probably yeah. communicate. We we have them yeah. set up so that they would communicate. Smart lights, similar to North River Road. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Smart lights. Um, okay. And so, Mark, is is Man of the Road anywhere? I noticed those other numbers you were projecting from thirty-one and then to forty-one. Right. And it didn't seem like a very big jump. Uh, just wondering, is there a capacity for some of those roads? You guys go by the standards. Um. Yes. Um. I guess it's not so much that as, as coming up with the capacity that will allow the intersections and the roadways to flow or, or to, to handle the projected traffic demands. Um, I don't, you, don't, you don't want to speak to that, do you, Emmanuel? Capacity of the roads? Uh, with uh, regards to the 2031-2041 projection. Not every road. Mounted road within the confines of our model uh, still function well um, with the two signalized intersections. So the reason for or, or the, the, the logic behind signalization um, in this case and with regards to impacts to Mount Edward Road is really the northbound left movement 
coming into these roads, how the road and sensor drive to to cross uh, to cross the trail into the mall area. Um, without stabilization at these two intersections, really those movements would experience probably significant uh, capacity constraints, and, and that would tend to block things or squeeze things down on, on Monday Road and increase the friction. Um, with our analysis, we really didn't, there was no need came up, uh, so to speak, for, for any widening of Monday Road. No. Um, but again, our model ends just about at, at Oak Drive, okay. just north of Oak Drive. So this particular exercise hasn't looked at conditions for stuff on on other groups. Okay. But from from your calculations of the capacity of Mallard Road is good until 2041 anyway. Mm -hmm. Right? Correct. It, it would be sufficient, yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, right. To note that the growth on on Edward Road is a bit um, well, the traffic growth on Edward Road is primarily driven on, well, on one hand by the, I guess, assumed development in this area, as well as by some regional growth on, on Edward Road, destined to, to the north of the study area and to the commercial area itself. Definitely not too much growth um, just by virtue of this area being sort of the, the, the only next connection across the trail once you're, you're past uh, Belvedere. <coughs> um, there's a limit to how much this route can, can attract in terms of traffic one to, yeah. to cross the trail. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, man. So, Mark, the, the four lane on Spencer, that would be planned into it. Would that open be before? 2031, 2040. When do you? Right now, the volume. Uh, I guess the 24, the 2041 estimated volumes are what. We well, need expanded to four lanes. The potential need for four lane. Yeah. I mean, you would build it initially as a two lane yeah. roadway. And traffic and going into those apartment buildings, I'm sure, would cross and would be taken it from University Avenue and also Mount Everett Road, right? Sure. Yep. We're coming off the bypass. Yep. Council Tweet. Yeah. So, so. <laughs> the intersection is not having it lined up. Uh, if you're a punch a hole, say we're Princess Auto, <coughs> heading towards uh, Mount Edward Road. Okay. But if you go across the street the other way, it's like right? Was well, there any thought given to punching a road through there and then takes you behind that building? I guess Good electric. That, that Out on the they, 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 they have that there. It's right there. Yeah, it is. There. So, yeah. are you talking about punching a road, road through there? Yeah, correct. That would eventually yes. line up with uh, Princess Auto? So, the yep. section? Yes, correct. Yeah. So, that road would be Babineau. So, right now we're proposing. So, here's the intersection. Here's Princess Auto. We are right. talking about. Here's the Rhinus property. So, yep. yes, we're connecting. We're proposing a road through here. Good electric right here and coming right out. So, okay. Yeah. Then the question becomes, yeah. we're going to make that kind of an investment mm -hmm. into that infrastructure. Maybe, again, gentlemen, I'm not an engineer, but maybe that would take the pressure if you lined it up there as opposed to uh, Spencer Drive over to Mount Everett. Maybe that would take the pressure off that part of, uh, that part of Sherwood, and maybe it makes more sense in trying to preserve and protect the integrity and the quality of life uh, from uh, that intense vehicle traffic. You know, that, uh, that neighborhood street, like the Ash Drives, for example. I wonder, is that a possibility? I mean, can we not entertain that? Yeah. Again, at the end of the day, to create another three-way intersection on Manor Road is just, it, it's not uh, the ideal method to no. put in a new road, especially when you have a very natural connection uh, that lines up very well with Capitol Drive, you know, Capitol Drive, uh, one of the busy streets or in, in the city or the province. Uh, it, it just makes, full sense to have it a natural flow right across there. We already have part of the infrastructure in there as well. Um, 
and uh, like I say, it just makes the natural flow makes the yeah. makes the optimal it's the optimal placement for this type of connection. So Scott, you're wanting to drive that traffic into that those in that neighborhood. That's basically what you're saying. Yeah. At the end of the day, a lot of that traffic will disperse left mm -hmm. or right. They won't. Yeah. It's it's to, for yeah. someone to come down Capitol Drive to get to Brackley Point Road, unless they're accessing somewhere in a Sherwood neighborhood, Maple it, it, it just does not make sense for them to be cutting through. Councilman Cloud. Thank you very much. Um, I'm not an engineer, so you can answer this one, guys. But if you were to punch, if you were to come through where Councilman Tweel says, mm -hmm. would would you come out not on a downward hill? Would that not be part of the Maverick Road where you're sloping toward the, the bypass? Would you want an intersection on the downside of the hill? That'd be my concern. It, it potentially, yeah. Curry right. right. Garden intersection is on a pretty good slope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. You're, you're right. It's it would good. make uh, yeah. just an intersection on, on the downward mm -hmm. uh, plane. I don't know what would be the smartest thing. Yeah. So, Scott, the next stage is a public meeting, correct? Uh, Alex, this Price. goes to a public yeah. meeting, mm -hmm. right? Public consultation. Yes. So, so there'll be lots of questions here at that point. Can I just get a copy of it now? Yes, yeah, so, I think so Councilor we'll, Duffy we'll asked. Pass on this, uh, uh, hopefully, I can get it after. I'll get it off you after this meeting. Yeah, yeah, and then I'll pass it around to the council tonight, um, and then uh, we'll be, we'll be on the public uh, council meeting and then bring it back to uh, to this council as well uh, with a uh, final version of the report, uh, taking into consideration uh, some feedback we get from uh, from the residents as well. Good, Alex. Uh, I would just point out as well, we have met with uh, some of the key stakeholders in this neighborhood yeah. and I hate saying what people think, but I don't think we have anybody that's significantly resisting this. Uh, I think they see the opportunity. I think that you have to look at why this is here. This is here because this whole land in through here is landlocked. Yeah. With the first application, once uh, St. Martha's Court was done, the property owner here wanted to dump 80 U cars out through a former driveway on a house out on the Mount Everett Road. Mm -hmm. And then all of them wanted to do that all the way along. So you know, 80 units, 80 units, 80 units, 80 units. We knew it was that, that scenario was definitely going to impact Mount Everett Road in the worst capacity. And you know, from, from our point of view, with the lack of availability of land, this is an ideal location to open all those lines. So, uh, you know, the, the, there's a lot more going on here than just the, <coughs> correcting the, the existing road network, but it's to, to allow these developers to come in and if, in the future when they come in, they're going to have to, if you folks approve this, they're going to have to align onto these roadways right. so that they have somewhere to go because we, we, we don't want them just individually all heading back over to the mounted road with individual traffic studies because we know right before that even starts that that's going to be problematic. Yes. So there will be an opportunity at the public meeting, and it will be both public works and planning, correct? Correct. So Councillor McLeod, Councillor Duffy will be chairing the meeting or part of the meeting when we go to the public, correct? That's correct. So this goes public now. This is, this is all great. So we'll open our website. Uh, we will make, be making those changes, yes. So we'll be making that to be available to the public before the public meeting so that they can review it. Uh, we will do a presentation, of course, at the public meeting and allow uh, individuals to raise comments or questions. And this is uh, a 20 year plan, right? Yeah. Correct, yes, yes, yeah. 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 2041. It's to create these nodes, create these connection points so that when the developer comes in, as Alex said, uh, we know roughly where that road has to go yeah. to make sure this track, we can yeah. handle that traffic volume. Yeah. 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 Councilor Yankoff? Uh, just for clarification, um, when you say it will become available to the public, prior to the public meeting. We don't have a date yet for the public right. meeting. What does that mean for the public? Will they, will they get to see it tomorrow? We're gonna to try to get it up uh, yeah. if tomorrow, not the next day, but this week for sure. Yes. And we'll yeah. put uh, okay. PSAs out yeah. on our social media that it's online. Right. This is how you find it. Mm -hmm. yeah, correct. Thank you. And at some point we'll have a banner there that can connect to the, <laughs> to the, uh, to the plan. Good. Thank you. Mark, Thank you Emmanuel, much. Scott, Alex. Thank you very, very kind. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you Mabel. Thank you. Okay. So, 
We have a motion to move into a closed section, closed session, as per section 119, subsection oh. 1D and E of the MGA of Prince of Rhode Island. Moved by Councilor McCabe, seconded by Councilor Ramsey. All in favor? Yes. Now, we just want to take a quick.